This is gonna be another rant video. <laughs> Fair warning. This is just ridiculous. The levels they're going to to protect this one movie and this one actress from this one movie. Hello everyone, I am MechaRandom42, your favorite YouTube harpy and I, I'm kind of speechless with all of this stuff between everything that's been going on with this movie. To just flat out admit like this that you're you're protecting this movie. Normal people who don't even follow this are going to be like, what the hell? You know, what the hell is up with this? Why are you trying so hard to protect? It's fishy as crap. The more things they do, you know, and, and there's a few articles I've pulled up here about this. All of these things at once between that and Midnight's Edge copyright strike right in midstream. Oh, and if you guys didn't know about that. Um, th so, so a couple of days ago on, on, I believe Thursday morning or Wednesday morning, Andre from Midnight's Edge, the main channel of a hundred and thousand, hundred thousand subscribers went on, um, went to do a live stream cause he saw the movie, uh, they, they released it a day early internationally. So he saw it early, went to live stream to give his review. And right as he got into the, you know, the, the kind of feminist agenda subplot sort or subtext rather, they were hit with a full on copyright strike. And now we don't know if that's malicious or not. And it's since been, been, been since rescinded or removed so they can live stream again. We did an amazing live stream round table about Captain Marvel. I'll link that in the description. Between all of these things, I mean, normal people are going to start to question this. And, and as YouTubers, you know, this isn't some, some crazy thing, you know, there, there, it, it is so many weird little things happening, like the Midnight's Edge copyright strike, like YouTube changing its search algorithm, like Rotten Tomatoes deleting result, like deleting fan scores, deleting fan reviews, even, you know, there's just been a thing on top of thing on top of thing. And, and it's, it's kind of, it, it's, it's pathetic if it's not malicious, right? If it's just something where, oh no, oh no, we just don't want people to have to say bad things about our movie. You know, you know, are we really hurting them? Are we really hurting this movie that much, right? All things considered, when we were complaining about Solo, a Star Wars story, when we were complaining about Last Jedi, did we really hurt them that much? Solo did lose money, but, but didn't, but did, but didn't. I mean, there, there's all kinds of evidence, you know, that people have been digging up about that one versus what, you know, the reports are always saying where, oh no, no, it's a good thing. Solo lost money, but it's a good thing. It'll make it back up. So these movies never really actually lose money anyway. But the more they complain, like the, the more it kind of, it, it just feels like, were they, were they that worried we were going to have another uh, Han Solo, a Star Wars story movie? I always say Han Solo. It's just weird saying Solo, a Star Wars story. But it, it, did they really think we were going to have another one of those on their hands where, where they were with like a $60 billion opening weekend? I never thought it would go that low. I mean, I'm, I'm hearing reports now of it's, uh, it's got like 160 million opening weekend, which isn't surprising. It's not shocking. I, I kind of thought maybe the movie might have been in the 95 million with all the controversy, but you know, maybe, maybe this worked. Maybe this, this did save them, you know, 50 million or so by changing the freaking algorithm. So let, let's get into it. Read these articles. What do you guys think? <laughs> this is just some some weird. It just stinks to high heaven to me. It is just, it's it's kind of almost like scary, almost almost like nineteen eighty four times when you know if you can't if you can't make a good movie, tell people it's a good movie, and then shut anybody up who who says it's not a good movie. You know, that's kind of where we're at, and this is clearly what's going on with them changing the rules, you know? If you can't win a game by the rules, you change the rules or you cheat. And that's what they're doing. If you search Brie Larson on YouTube a couple of days ago, the top search results were calls for a boycott of Captain Marvel and angry rant rants about Larson's involvement in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. With one small change, YouTube made all of that disappear. This week, YouTube recategorized Brie Larson as a newsworthy search term. That does one very important job. It makes the search algorithm surface videos from authoritative quote-unquote subjects 
or on a subject, instead of videos from individual creators, YouTube responds with videos from Entertainment Tonight, ABC, CBS, and CNN, and other news outlets first. Except the, th the thing is, CBS is not really necessarily a news outlet anymore. I don't trust them. And we all see how they run comicbook.com, which is basically their propaganda arm, right? And, and they're so up Disney's ass as well. They're probably trying to get in on, to, to get in on some sort of merger in the future or something. So they're pretty much the same com company. ABC is owned by Disney. Entertainment Tonight, I believe, is owned by ABC, which is owned by Disney. So, so they're double shills. And CNN hasn't been partial or hasn't been biased or, or non-biased rather in the last 20 years. They've always had a bias one way or the other. So I don't, I don't count CNN any more than I count Fox News for <laughs> my news sources. The algorithmic news tool was first rolled out in, over, in October 2017 following a mass criticism over how YouTube searches favored conspiracy videos over actual news after a mass shooting in Las Vegas uh, and in, at a Las Vegas music festival. The change from the algorithmic search that comes from labeling event as news can be seen below. So here's the searches. Uh, this, ki this is kind of a fascinating discovery, tweets Julia Alexander. I don't know who that is. YouTube seems to have changed the immediate Brie Larson search results to news. That pushes up the authoritative sources and in turn pushes troll or MRA style video rants pretty far down the page. And you got the before and after. You know, but that's the thing. Oh god, that's John Talks. I know him. Shout out to John Talks. Who else? Who else? I can't quite read them. Oh lord, that's, that's cool though, right? I wish. Well, Here's the other thing, though. It's a lot of it is based on your individual searches, though. Like if I'm searching for Brie Larson, you you can see that she filtered it by she, she's using the news as top news. She used it as a news filter. So is this even true? Right. If, if I go to my YouTube and I search Brie Larson, what do I get? I haven't even I haven't even done. Let's let's do it. Let's search Brie Larson. What comes up? Here's all this stuff. <laughs> Here's all this stuff. Brie Larson. Okay, so it has it has all the fluff shit. It does have all the fluff shit, all the stuff that I wouldn't probably. It does three buck theater. He's not news. And then there's John talks. So so here we go. John talks, but he's also not really news. World class bullshitters also not news. I'm glad that they're higher than Entertainment Tonight though. So shout out to Jeff over on World Class Bullshitters. But no, none of these channels are really like news channels, right? But but we are kind of in the in the algorithm. So at least some of us are in the algorithm. World class bullshitters is up higher than the Oh Jesse! Jesse, shout out to Jesse, shout out to the quartering. We've got some good channels here, right? And and we are oh there's me. Holy shit, that's an old one. That one got that one actually got demonetized. I'm higher than their colorful karaoke one. That's nice. So I was just I was just curious. That's the, that's the third article. We're going to that one last. <laughs> that, that's just one of those things that, like, is really scary, though. Like, if, if they're really, really trying to suppress us, I don't think they're doing that good of a job still. I mean, just scroll down a few and you'll get actual people, like, like the boycott stuff. And, and sometimes with the, with the thumbnails, they're not necessarily calling for a boycott. I don't remember if I watched that video of John's. But, I mean, sometimes if you have, like, boycott on the thumbnail... If you click it, sometimes it'll just be a discussion about the boycott or why I won't support a boycott or why I will support a boycott. That's kind of how clickbait works. That's how a lot of my discovery videos, when I was questioning if it was canceled or not, got kind of lumped in with the, oh, you're fake news. You said it was canceled. It's like, no, if you watch the video, I didn't actually say that. But that's how, that's how YouTube is, right? <sighs> but it's, it's kind of cool to see that I'm under news. I, I'm fine with that. <laughs> <sighs> Many of the responses seen in the first image in the tweet above aren't news, but they fall under commentary or criticism in response to Larson calling for more diverse journalists at press junkets. Trolls started using sites like Twitter and YouTube, fuck you, The Verge, suck a dick, to campaign against Larson and Captain Marvel. The campaign, Captain, wow. <sighs> I'm reading ahead. I'm reading ahead, okay? <laughs> 
campaign even led Rotten Tomatoes to institute a new anti-review bombing measure, which we did talk a little bit about. Which 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 link is theirs? That's this one. This, this is another one that I actually ha have talked about before, I believe, from March 7th. Or I was going to. I think I was going to. How the movie sites are dealing with the review bombing trolls. <sighs> to deal with the cavalcade of angry people to tear down Captain Marvel's page before it's been released. That's the problem that you're trying to silence us. That's the, that's the problem. You're trying to silence people who might question things. People who might say, wait a minute. That's not what we said. And you're doing the same. Like, oh. Just stop. Just don't. You don't want to be. You don't want to be on the side of, of, you know, of being the news sites. They're so obsolete. And that's that's the problem with a lot of these. A lot of these news sites are, are basically trying to generate clickbait articles just to get the hate clicks because they know they're obsolete. They know they're dead. They know they're they're just shilling for for this insane little outrage culture and, and I swear the SJW outrage culture sort of people it's, it's like being in a room or it's like going to daycare and, and you have to play with the one bully little kid who who will basically tattle and say hey teacher they hit me unless you play with them unless you play nice and play their little games and agree with them they'll basically go and lie and say you hit them or whatever that is what the SJWs are they're, they're basically these bratty little kids who they want to play the game they want to play. And if they lose, they'll change the rules. And, and if, if, you know, if you don't want to play, if you want to play something else, they'll lie and say you hit them or, or you're, they'll throw you out of their house or, or they'll lie and say you broke one of their toys, even though they broke it themselves. That is exactly what these SJWs are. They're bratty children. YouTube spokesperson declined to comment when a certain topic like Brie Larson versus Captain Marvel is de designated as news, but The Verge confirmed this is part of YouTube's ongoing campaign to ensure that when the, people, when the people use YouTube as a way for looking on news on a topic, the company relies on authoritative sources first and foremost. Well, what if we're just looking uh, for Brie Larson interviews or Brie Larson commentary? You know, what if we're just looking on looking for... What did she say? What do I? What did this person think she said? You know, how does how does John from John Talks react to what Brie Larson said on this interview? What does he think? That's the news I'm actually interested in because I've seen the news clip twenty times over. We've all seen the news clip twenty times over. What did Odin from Odin's movie blog have to say about Brie Larson? You know that that's kind of what this, this is why changing it is just so ridiculous too. The noticeable shift. Uh, in response, speaks to an even, even bigger conversation about YouTube's search algorithm. If there's a way to prioritize higher quality videos when people are searching for a topic, could this be used for non-news topics too? See, here's the problem. You get a lot of these nobody YouTubers who have these like fancy sets and stuff who are viewed as news authorities because they're out there kissing the butt of like Disney or whatever. There, there's some of these, some of these YouTubers I don't watch because they look too professional. I don't want to hear what some guy in an expensive studio has to say. What, what, what does the guy with the dogs playing behind him have to say? You know, what, what do real people have to say? You know, what, what, what is, what is the guy in the Alabama, you know, jacket and the Star Wars hat have to say, you know, shout out to Jeremy also and Ethan. Since we're shouting out everybody on the planet, of course, shout out Ethan Van Skyver as well. Th this is this is the problem, though. You know, some creators see it as a problem if YouTube favors videos from approved news outlets instead of individuals. Exactly, exactly. On Twitter, some critics and creators call it censorship from YouTube. It is. While others commented this, or commended the site for taking some kind of action, and YouTube has millions of creators on the platform who are fighting to get their videos seen. If traditional news outlets are shown favoritism, it's a cultural shift that will see immense backlash from a large portion of the creator community. Exactly. There you go. And and yes, and this the other thing is the the review bombing for Rotten Tomatoes. They've deleted th this article. Basically, confirms, I believe, that they deleted. Here we go. The the film, the release of the film, and even though this is comicbook.com, they're still somewhat credible from time to time on other things. So they they say the release of the film reinstated all of the negative comments that were posted ahead of the film's release, which is what I kind of figured. 
as were now considered reviews under the site's formatting. To the casual viewer, it appeared as though Captain Marvel had accumulated more than 50,000 reviews, with a percentage of positive reviews sitting in the 30s. In hopes of correcting the issue, the site purged roughly 50,000 user comments, whether they be positive or negative, that's that that's not that we don't know that for sure that's speculation seeming in hopes of correcting the work done by trolls before the film is released see here's here's the problem with them deleting all the these reviews all of the fake positive counteract the fake negative right let's say let's say on imdb now i gotta pull up imdb let's, let's pull up imdb here oh lord imdb IMDb. Boop for Captain Marvel's. Where where are you, Captain Marvel? Are you here? You're here. So when you go in and now it's a 6.9 out of 10, when you go to this graph, you see all like 15,000, 15,000 10 out of 10s. You see about 10,000 1 out of 10s. I would say they kind of balance each other out by by removing all the, the really, really trolly positive and the really, really trolly negatives. That would be fair, but they they don't seem to be doing that. They seem to be just going after the negative ones. I can't prove it, but that's just what it kind of seems like from from um when I go through on Rotten Tomatoes site, when I go through and actually scroll through, they keep updating it, and it's, it's like almost impossible to keep up with with all the reviews. And here's the thing: I have had a few people email me and tell me either over Twitter or email or, you know, in chat rooms, they're, they're getting their, they're getting their reviews removed. They're getting their reviews deleted. They, I've even had a couple of people say, yeah, I got an email saying my review was removed. So I, I don't know if they're just like going through and removing automatically, like all the ones that just kind of seem fishy or the ones that seem like, oh, it just says SJW delete. It's one, one star SJW delete that one. I don't know. I have, I have no idea what's going on, but it feels so fishy over there with Rotten Tomatoes. And we can't be sure they're not, you know, completely removing only the negative reviews because why, what, you, you've, you've got to figure this. It would cost them a lot of money if this movie bombs because they have a vested interest. They, they get money from Fandango through ticket sales, through the links from Rotten Tomatoes, because Rotten Tomatoes and Fandango are the same company. Fandango owns Rotten Tomatoes. You, you've got the, the CEO of Fandango and Rotten Tomatoes, who used to be an exec at Disney. They're all kind of, they're all in bed with each other. They're all basically, at least that's my speculation on it. What do you guys think? Oh, Lord. I, I, this just worries me. This is really, really upsetting that they're just going out of their way to censor, shut us up, silence us, keep us quiet. And I'm kind of concerned about this. So tell me what you guys think in the comment section below. Do you want that Nine Inch Nails video with Brie Larson Nine Inch Nails shirt? I think I'm going to make that video next. But thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys on the next video or live stream. Bye! Thanks for watching! If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button, and if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe! See you in the next video! Bye!